Hey, what's guys? Welcome back to Chain One. Today, so we're talking about extending the runtime of your Blue Eddy EV3A. Probably same thing with you know all the other solar generators out there with batteries you already have. Okay, we're gonna use that's right power tool batteries to make the runtime of this longer. There's no industry secret. There's a good way to do this. The question is really how to do it and with what. So we're gonna go over some of those using these batteries right here. Stick with us. All right, you guys, so this right here is the Blue Eddy EB3A. It's fairly new. We, we bought it, it's not sponsored. Um, depending on whenever you bought it, you could probably get it for around 209 or something like that, somewhere around 200 bucks. And for what a solar generator is or a power station is, right? Um, let's just go over the basics of it. This is not a review, okay? Uh, it pretty much has a battery, inverter, and for solar generators, it will have a way to charge the battery on MPPT or for good ones, right? This one, even though it's 200 bucks, it's great value, has an MPPT controller, and that's how we're going to inject power into this, making it run longer, okay? Why would you wanna do that first of all? Let's answer that question. So this one right here has a 600 watt inverter, but only has an internal battery capacity of 268 watt hours. So yeah, 268, 600 watts, in, I mean, just you do the math there and just say, yeah, it's not gonna run for a long time, especially if you're drawing a lot, okay? So there's obviously ways to do this. You can connect solar panels and do all kinds of stuff here. If you have AC outlet, then I don't know why you're using this. That doesn't make sense. Um, but the way we wanna do this is use the solar charge input, okay? So the solar charge input on this unit will go and take up to about 200 watts. So let's just drill into that, right? So it has 600 watts continuous possible inverter, but if you draw 600 watts on a 268 watt hour battery, uh -huh, how much battery life do you think you're gonna get or runtime do you wanna get? AKA, answering the question, inject more power into it so you can run longer. So because this has a 200 watt in, uh, input of solar, it's really, if you think about it long term, if you want to use it like all day, you can only really draw a maximum of 200 watts, right? Um, plus or minus, maybe a little bit more. All right, you guys, so obviously this right here is the front part of the EB3A and the MPPT controller is right here. This is great news because the uh, range on here says 12 to 28 volts DC and maximum 8.5 amps. So whatever combination you want to use with that to get to 200 watts, that's what you want to do. And like I said, that's great news because most power tool batteries on the market, or at least the, the biggest platform ones, are running on 18 volts. Yes, they're 12 volts, 24 volts, and 60 volt, 36 volts for all kinds of stuff. But most of the ones I think that are most common are probably gonna be 18. So you could do the same principle with, the, with different power stations and different types of batteries, but so, as long as you stay within the spec range, you're gonna be fine, okay? So let's first off start off with Let's start off with the DeWalt because we're going to come back around to it, okay? So this is a DeWalt Flex Volt battery, okay? This right here is a DCB094K. The good thing about this is it has a 100 watts uh, USB-C power delivery capability, okay? So if you haven't watched the video on this uh, unit directly, definitely watch that because we have one on the channel. So yeah, go watch it. Um, so this one can do power. 100 watts, like I said, power delivery. And if you buy this unit, it also comes with a 100 watt power uh, delivery cable. So keep in mind, not all USB-C cables can do power delivery, not all USB-C cables are Thunderbolt cables, and not all USB-C power delivery cables can do 100 watts. Most of them will probably be around 65, 45 watts or something like that. If you're in the Apple ecosystem using Apple stuff, it can do more than 100 watts, but you know, that's all Apple specific stuff. So in this case, we're gonna be using this one right here, which is a pretty good quality 100 watt DeWalt cable, okay? So here's the problem. How are we gonna connect this? Yeah, that's gonna be a problem. So the way you wanna connect connect this is you could use something like this, right? That converts USB-C to eight millimeter port barrel. So if you put this in here, um, bam, you would think that should work, right? Let's see what happens. As you can see, the power, uh, it comes on noticing that, you know, there's some input voltage there, but it won't start charging. Um, this is primarily, I think, due to the reason I said in the other video, I'll link it maybe, uh, go check that one out on issues or problems with this Blue Eddy EB3A. Definitely go check that out, okay? Cause that, that'll probably drill more into this. But yeah, see, nothing's happening. We can even change out this adapter here to maybe this one, right? This is the USB-C 
to a uh, barrel port adapter. Um, so all, both of these have a little chip inside that say, hey, I need to draw or give me 100 watts or whatever power delivery profiles the, uh, it can support. So uh, this one I know is rated up to 100 watts, uh, but this one won't do it also. So this here is acting as the uh, battery bank source and is trying to send power to this one. This unit can actually pull power into it. So it really depends on what's working, but sync source, all this terminology, all this stuff aside, let's go ahead and just use layman's terms. This is gonna be the power bank. This is gonna be the consumer. We're trying to make this consume 100 watts of power. Obviously, it's not working. So we're gonna stop this. So you're not playing around with this because it's not going anywhere. And we'll come back around to it, okay? Let's go talk about the most common battery that most people have. I don't know if that's true or not, but let's talk about Ryobi. So this is the Ryobi 1 uh, 18 volt, one plus battery. What you could do is get something like this, take one of those little adapter things here. We saw it directly on here and put the USB-C port here. The good thing about this little adapter is that it supports up to 90 watts of power delivery, okay? This is safe on this, this battery, on almost all Ryobi batteries because for Ryobi tools, almost all the BMS and low voltage cutoff and all that stuff is built into the battery. That is not true for uh, all these other batteries, right? Let's take, for instance, this M18 battery. You got plus, minus, balance cells, thermal cutoff, all that kind of stuff here. This, you really just have to. It's an HP, so it may have this one extra one, but you know. The point is that you can do this with this safely. Put this on here, take this, right? Grab it right here right and then take the other end put that same adapter on there slap it on here right it powers on and it should in theory start charging up to about 90 watts okay uh you know with all the inefficiencies and something's drawing power so maybe look at that even if this puts out 90 watts it's really only getting about 81 watts okay so that's what's really going on there. Let's go ahead and pull this stuff off now that we know that this works, right? Go away with this. Uh, let's say you have M18 batteries. You could get something like this. This is the M18 battery. This one right here is an M18 top off. My number on something like this is 2846, if I can read. Man, that's really tiny. But the point of this is this is pretty, this setup here is pretty much similar to this, except this has no solar input and uh, this is a modified sine wave inverter, but the good thing about this is that it has USB-C out power delivery here So we take this USB-C power delivery, right? Uh, on the marketing and all that stuff, it says it does 45 watts But if you use good quality cable and all that kind of fun stuff, it will do up to 60 So I did think that was interesting. So plug that in here take this plug this in here, right? turn on the USB out port or the USB port on right and then it should in theoretic in theory, be able to send 45 watts from here into here to start charging. Let's see, do we, there it goes, look at that. So it will send maybe about 60 watts, but you know, with the uh, MPPT absorbing some power and then other inefficiencies, this, this thing thinks that it's only charging at 55 watts, right? So this right here is a 6.0 amp hour battery. So 6.0 amp hour battery on this 18 volt battery gives you about 108 watt hours. If you had the big boys, like the 12 just times that by two and that becomes like what, 216 watt hours? 216 watt hours is almost close to 268, okay? So just wanted to point that out because one 12 volt battery will almost get you um, close like another set of this pretty much right sure you're gonna lose more stuff and you know 268 is different than uh, 216 but it's close okay so that's what's going on there you could also do it with Makita batteries assuming we have one of these like so this is a Makita 5 amp hour battery this literally just some stupid uh, dummy thing that we tagged up here with a barrel port adapter we take this barrel port connect it to here or if you don't want to do that, you could just cut this off and wire it on here directly too. We've done that before, right? We take, um, let's go ahead and take this cable here, plug it in here, take this here, plug it in there, and assuming all things work out fine, this should get you somewhere about 90 watts or somewhere close to about 90 watts, right? Um, let's see, this is right now getting us about 86 watts. Yeah, that's pretty much close to 90, assuming, um, 
other inefficiencies aren't play at play here, right? So this is there. You can do this, but this one here is a little bit unsafe. Right now, this thing is not fused. Um, and this, this, the circuit board in here, I think I literally just took out to make this happen. So um, there's no like smart battery controls and all that stuff going on here. So low voltage cutoff, I don't know. I, I don't have full confidence that's gonna happen inside of this battery. It may, but I doubt it. So uh, I wouldn't do that. Um, if you had a choice, if you had an option not to, right? So all that stuff is going on there. What you can also do is, you know, this technically is designed to charge with this AC port, um, and you can also use both at the same time, but if you just get a wall outlet, you could just plug it into the wall outlet USB-C and plug it in there. But if you're just out in the wild and you can use a wall outlet to charge this, that just doesn't make sense, right? So um, just wanted to point that out there, folks, all right? So let's go back to the real question of how can we make this charge from the DeWalt, okay? So going back to this, this is the same DeWalt battery. This right here is the same DCB094K. Okay, so if what we're saying, or what we think is true, right, uh, this needs some power to start charging before you can use the DeWalt to start charging, a good way to trick it is gonna be have it start charging first, and then, um, plug in the DeWalt in there to see if the DeWalt can also start charging it, right? So that's the question. In order to do that, we're gonna take something like this, right? And then uh, what this here is, it's a uh, Y branch cable. You could think of it as splitter, combiner, whichever way you wanna think, but here's one end, here's the other end. It pretty much takes two, combines into one, or you could think of one and split, right? So we're gonna go ahead and then take this one, plug it in on here. We're gonna take one end of it, right? This one end, we're gonna plug in a uh, uh, 20 volt power brick. I think this is like a 90 watt power brick or something, I can't remember. Let's plug it in, see what it says, right? So there it goes, uh, what's going on here? Let's see. It'll get up to 72 watts. So maybe it's a 75 watt or 80 watt. There it goes, probably 90 watt power brick. Look at that, it's uh, 84, okay? So let's see if we can trick this into charging using this. Go ahead and get this going. Plug in this USB-C uh, power delivery cable here, right? Then plug in this little adapter that says, hey, give me 100 watts of power. So assuming, you know, this is 84 watts and if this can deliver 100 watts, it would be closer to about 184, but we'll see how that goes. Plug this in here. Let's see what happens. Well, it did jump to 115. One, we'll give it some time, maybe jump around, I don't know if it will, 138, right? Give it some more time, 156. Uh, 156, right? So what's happening with this is that we know that this was already charging from this power brick from about 85 watts, right? Now it's at 156. Eh, maybe, it's, is that, nah, I don't know, someone do the math there. Let's say that's probably close, right? Let's see what happens when we unplug this. Will it keep charging? That is the question, all right? Let's see here. Let's unplug this. Oh no, look at that. It won't even stay charging. That's a problem. Um, let's see if we can reset that and make it continue charging because what I found out is that every once in a while, you'll get lucky and some, you know, all the blue moons and stuff like that will align and it will stay charging. Uh, it just didn't happen in this case. So let's see if we can reset some of this stuff here. Let's go ahead and go ahead and start plugging this in. Take this, plug it into this flexible battery. It does have three bars of battery. We'll go ahead and plug this in here. Give it that, plug this in here. Give it that, plug this in, check it, 83. And here, what do we get? We get 97, 106, something's going on, 105. What is that, like 20, it got like 20, there it goes. Now we got 40, uh, 50, 50 additional maybe. Let's go and plug this real quick. Bam, look at that. You just can't make it stay charging um, with this plugged in. So something is going on with this where it won't really stay charging. I'm not sure what the answer to that really is. 
uh, every once in a while you'll get lucky where you, you can unplug this. I'll see if I can catch a clip after trying it enough times where it'll just stay charging even with that um, unplugged. I'll go ahead and move to this cable here, which is literal direct uh, cable. Plug this in here, we're at 84 watts. Plug this in here. Plug this in here. What happens? 87, 108. Something's beeping. 108, 140. It's probably still cycling through 156. And 155, looks like we've settled around 155, right? So we know this was already doing 84 plus 154. I don't know, I can't do the math. Let's say 50 plus something else, right? Um, what happens if we unplug this wall brick? Nope, can't work, right? So uh, for some reason, it can, it can get going, but it won't stay going. So I don't know what it is with this and this power station. All of these other ones right here seem to work pretty well, right? Um, I think I'm missing one. Where's Ryobi? Here we go. Oh, the Makita one. Yeah, we kind of just use this for the Makita one. Um, but that's what's really going on there. So stuff happens every once in a while where you just unplug it at just the right time where it'll stay working, but it's trickery, right? So just keep that stuff in mind. All right, you guys, so that's what's really going on there and how you can really inject more power into these power stations using power tool batteries, right? So the most important thing to take away from here is just stay within the range of, you know, your power station specs. And you probably care probably what about the equipment, right? So I think the favorite one here is gonna be obviously this one, which is a direct cable with no adapters attached to it from USB-C to uh, eight point or eight millimeter, I think this is. Uh, this branch Y cable or splitter combiner, whatever you wanna call it. That way you can combine two, right? If you had DeWalt and Milwaukee, maybe you could do, actually we didn't get DeWalt one working that well. But if you had two Milwaukee ones or Milwaukee and Ryobi or this and Makita, whatever, you could probably get that going. And that's what this branch here thing is adapted for. And most people, most people probably wonder when the world this is. If I remember correctly, I think this is like a BATS power, 90 watt uh, USB-C adapter type thing. I think this is, yeah, 90 watts. So uh, I think we got this stuff off Amazon or something like that. But like I said, all this stuff here, at least the tools and cables and equipment and stuff is all listed in the description below with links. Um, if you want this little adapter, USB-C to barrel, this is better uh, or second best. And then I would say this right here is probably third best because if you have this, you really have to deal with like, you know, this finicky thing here and that just looks stupid and it is stupid. So cables number one. Second choice is this little pigtail adapter. Third choice is actually just this little adapter, right? Um, make sure, like I said, when you do this, you use good quality power delivery cable. So if you have a MacBook Pro or USB-C with all that stuff, you could probably use that because that's supported usually at least minimum of 87. Uh, if you get the big one with uh, the 16 inch one, whatever with the uh, Pro Ultra Max or whatever in the world it is nowadays, um, it probably gives you one, you can get that. Or you can just use this DeWalt one, it gives you 100 watts, right? But Keep in mind, not all USB-C power delivery cables are Thunderbolt cables, and not all Thunderbolt cables are just USB-C cables, not all USB-C cables are USB-C power delivery cables. Yeah, it's really confusing. So just make sure, just get this one, it'll just make things easier. Or just go on whatever you look for and just make sure that you get a 100 watt capable USB-C power delivery cable. That's what you really wanna take away from that, right? Like I said, if you wanna use something like this power brick that can do USB-C up to here, that's fine. But long story short, uh, 600 watt uh, inverter capable, 268 watt hour battery, all these batteries and stuff you just inject into here and there's not too much loss, there's a little bit of loss, but not too much because you're going DC to DC. Don't be the clown that plugs this in to there and then takes out of here and then plugs it in there because you're just going DC to AC, AC to AC and then AC to DC in here. So you're just losing a lot. So go DC to DC, that's the best thing to do. And here's a disclaimer, don't do any of this because I told you to do so, just do it if you want to. Just don't come back to me saying you broke something or set something in on fire. So there you go. Do as I say, now as we do. Otherwise, have a great day. Hope you learned something. Hope this video has been informational. Thanks for joining us on this, uh, I don't know, excitement uh, experiment. Uh, otherwise, have a great day, and we'll see you guys next time.